Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I finally got all the new parts in that I needed for to uh, reassemble my Muncie four-speed transmission for my 71 Corvette. Uh, just quick update, this, this is a Muncie four-speed transmission. I got it from Corvette Generation. My car originally came with the um, Turbo 400 automatic transmission and I wanted to go with a four-speed. So I got with Corvette Generation, told them I needed a a four-speed kit. They sell a kit where they give you the transmission, the bell housing, clutch, pressure plate, um, the uh, stock shifter if you want it. You can update to a her shifter and um, everything you need basically including the, the center console plate for the four-speed and stuff. Everything you need to put a four-speed transmission in your car. Uh, all the the clutch linkage and clutch pedal assembly, all that. The problem I ran into, my car is a 1971, and unfortunately down there, uh, I, I don't know how they arrange their parts, but he gave me a, a Muncie four-speed transmission. It works just fine and everything. There's nothing wrong with it to go in my car, but when I pulled it out here and started working on it and ran the numbers on the case, I discovered it's out of a 1965 Corvette. And some of the changes I could see on it were the, um, here on the input shaft, this, this is an inch and eighth 10 spline shaft, okay? If it, if it would have been for 71, this would have been a, I think it's a 32 spline, I, I don't quote me on that. I know it's a lot finer spline. Okay, that was one difference. Um, the other difference is, and I'm not sure uh, if mine would have had a one inch uh, counter shaft in it, but this one has a seven eighths counter shaft. And I don't really see any advantage or disadvantage to a one inch over a seven eighths, unless you, you were building a racing transmission and you wanted the extra strength. Uh, personally, I think those work just fine in my car. I don't have a problem with that. But again, it was something a little bit different. Um, seemed like there was a couple of little differences I can't think of right offhand. If I think of it, I'll let you know. But uh, when I tore into this transmission, originally it was just to replace the seals because it was leaking a little bit, but I found little odds and ends wrong with this transmission internally and uh, seal-wise that I'm glad I tore it completely down. One of the things I discovered was these, um, these steel thrust washers these are the new ones here. I had to order new ones. My old ones were worn down pretty good. Some of them, uh, especially for the reverse or secondary shaft, um, I mean, it was worn down really good. Um, so I, I had to order new thrust washers. Now, I'd really like to have gone with a, a bronze-faced thrust washer, but everywhere I looked, the only ones I could find for, that were bronze-faced here um, uh, were for the one inch shaft. So I, I ended up getting the steel ones. That's what the factory had originally, the steel faced ones like this. So it should work just fine. Um, it's just, I would have liked to go on the bronze if I could have, but unfortunately, like I said, they don't make them that I could find for a seven eighths counter shaft. Now, uh, assembling this counter shaft, you have this, this gear assembly here and you have to install all the needle bearings and spacers individually and you pack them with grease to hold them in place. They don't have any kind of cage that holds them together. These are the original needle bearings I took out. They look like new. Um, I think they'll be just fine. They mic okay. They should measure 156 diameter for a 7 8 shaft. I think on a 1 inch shaft, I think they measure 120 diameter, but don't quote me on that. But anyway, on, on this particular transmission, they, they measure 156 thousandths diameter. And on the assembly here, you can see I kind of laid it out here. You have this center spacer tube that will go in here, and then you have a spacer that will go here, and then a row of needle bearings, a spacer, a row of needle bearings, and another spacer. And you do that on both ends. And there should be 20 rollers per set here. So there'll be 20 rollers here, 20 or needle bearings, and 20 needle bearings here, and same way on the other end. So uh, 
Normally, if you open a new pack, you don't have to count them out or anything. I did because I'm using the old ones over again. They look good. I don't think there's anything wrong with them. Um, so I'm using them over again. But I, I laid them out and counted them out just to make sure I didn't drop one when I was dis disassembling the transmission. And, and then I go crazy trying to figure out why I've got a space in one of my bearings here. So that's why I did that. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll start... Uh, putting the, uh, the bearings into this gear assembly. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a bunch of grease on this and slide this in. It doesn't fit real tight in here, but it'll kind of help hold it in place and kind of help give you something to push the needle bearings against. So, um, you know, grease her up good. I'm just using this blue, um, it's just a uh, high temp grease. It's pretty sticky, so it should hold everything in place while I assemble it. Okay, I'll just shove that in like that. And I'm just gonna shove it in just a little ways. And then I'm gonna take my first spacer. And these are just hardened washers for the, the rollers to run against so they don't wear into that spacer. That spacer is just a mild steel spacer. Okay. Push that down just a little bit. I don't know if it's showing up good in the video there. And then you just start taking your spacers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a good dab of grease in the bore of this. And just start stacking them in here. Okay, you want to keep them straight with the bore. There's some people say you shouldn't use a dummy shaft when you assemble this, that, that the grease will hold the rollers in place. I don't know, it's the first time I've ever done this, so I guess I'll, I'll learn here. What a mess. I think it'd be easier to do without gloves, but because they, they want to kind of stick to your gloves too. I don't know, as much as I don't like getting sticky and greasy, I think I'm going to have to, because I don't like how, when I pull out, they stick to these gloves and you can't feel it, so it's kind of hard to get them staying there. I'll try, I'll try this first one and see. I might be taking my gloves off for the other three. Okay, I've got half the rollers in this side, half the needle bearings, or roller bearings, whatever you want to call them. See, I'm peeling them out of the top now. I don't like that. I'm taking these gloves off. You know, it's getting bad. I'm taking my gloves off. The gloves are coming off. What I thought about doing is just sliding the shaft in. I don't know if that'll work or not. I'm gonna try sliding the shaft in. And this one end's a little bigger than the other end, so you wanna take the smaller end when you shove it through here. 
and I'm hoping I can slide it through without pushing my bearings out. Okay. Okay, so I got the first ones in there. So what I want to do, I want to push them back in there just a little ways. And I'm sure the professional guys that do this are probably laughing at me, but hey, I've never done one of these before, so I'll just be happy if I get them all in there and don't have any rollers left over. Okay, so what I want to do is take this next washer, spacer, put in there. Bunch of grease around here. What I want to do is get that like that. Stacking them in there. I'm going to kind of keep them straight with the bore. Okay, and then you put the last spacer on there. Okay, and you do the same thing to the other end. Okay, so I've got all the rollers in, all the uh, spacers in, the center tube in. What I'm going to try to do now is I'm going to try to pull this shaft back out without losing any of the rollers because you can't have that shaft in there when you put it in the transmission case. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping I can push it out and not lose any of the rollers. Okay, that part's done. So let me get my camera reset and we'll install this in the transmission housing. Okay, I've got the transmission case here all cleaned up and ready to go back together. I'm gonna put a little bit of this um, gasket maker in this hole here uh, because there's no seal on this other than just the fit of the shaft. And sometimes you can get a little bit of seep of a little drop of oil coming out of your transmission here once in a while. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some of this on this end in the hole because the shaft's got to come through all those greasy bearings and everything and I don't want to run this stuff through my bearings so I'm just going to put a nice good layer in there and then on the end of the shaft that has a little uh, offset on it there 
that goes in the, from the back of the transmission and it's a tighter fit, so it's actually a little bit of a press fit right here. You can actually feel a little step in it. So that's what kind of helps hold it in the housing until you get everything put all together. Once everything's all together, the shaft really can't come out. Okay, so we got that part ready. I'm just gonna stand this up on the bell housing just to get it up a little bit higher so maybe you can see it a little bit better. The counter shaft goes back in here and you can see the little slot right there and on the thrust washer, it's got just a little tang and that tang goes into there. So I'm gonna put some grease on this thrust washer to hold it in place on this bottom one. The top one you can slide in after you put the, um, the gear assembly in before you put the shaft in, but this uh, this one's gotta go in before you put the gear assembly in. So you just put it down like that. Okay. Okay, I've got the gear assembly with all the needle bearings in it and the uh, little thrust washers and everything in there. And the big gear goes towards the front of the case. So you want to be careful, you don't want to bounce it around or anything when you put it in there and knock those needle bearings loose. So you just slip it in there like that. And now I'm gonna grease the, this upper thrust washer a little bit. And then it goes in a little bit of an angle and the, the slot's off to the side so you can uh, put this in after that gear assembly is in place. Okay, I got it in, I got the shaft down in there. I'm gonna go ahead and tap it in place. Make sure you get this slot where it's parallel with the bottom of the case. Okay, so now we've got the, um, the counter shaft in the housing. Uh, the shaft is, is pressed into place. You can see right up here, you wanna press it where this lower part's flush with the case and that this is parallel pretty much with the bottom of the case because it's got a clear little lip on this uh, center plate here. And the gear, it spins freely and up and down if you can hear that, it feels to me like I got somewhere between five and maybe five and eight thousandths clearance. I didn't check with the feeler gauge, but just basing on how far that's moving, it might be ten thousandths maybe, but I don't think it's any more than that. So that's, that's really good clearance. It spins free. Um, all the bearings are in there. I didn't have any parts left over for that section. So that's going to finish this video for today. Uh, we'll pick up again on the next video with uh, the uh, assembling the next part of the transmission, It'll probably be the input shaft and the main shaft. And uh, if we have time in the video, we'll go ahead and put the, uh, the center plate here, the mid plate, and then the tail section on and, and button it all up and be, have it put back together. So we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.